Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Melton here, and right now I could not be any more excited to grab a hold of my cherished 1971 Ovation Breadwinner and just make it scream. If you've been following along with our band Dream Machine as we've been recording our upcoming album, Direct to Analog Tape, using the Tascam 38, then you know I'd sent this guitar off to the guitologist to get it all fixed up, and here it is. Do you know the guitologist? If not, you should check this guy out. He got his start on YouTube by dumpster diving at Guitar Center, pulling amps and stuff out uh, that they'd thrown away and repairing them. So his channel is guitars, amps. He actually recently made a YouTube video about repairing this guitar, my 1971 Ovation Breadwinner Solid Body Electric. And I've linked uh, to that video down in the description. And in today's video, I'm gonna be reacting a little bit to the guitologist video where he literally tears this guitar apart and works on it breaks it down, builds it back up. It was just in need of an overhaul, and here it is, reunited at last. It works, and he really did a great job. And how cool is this? You send your guitar out for repairs, and then there's a video of the actual repair job taking place where you can see exactly what went down. Don't you wish you could see what really goes on behind the scenes when you drop something off like that? Anyway, oh, by the way, I pulled this thing out of the case and he's wired this sucker up to 11. So apparently it now goes to 11. But before we get into that, I gotta tell you about this thing. The pickup and this handmade brass frame that I added on later to this ovation came off a weird project guitar that had been the Melton family since the 1960s. It was a guitar given to me by my uncle, Dennis Melton, and there was brass all over this thing. He had hand cut some brass plates for the inside, handmade this brass frame, uh, and he put this uh, DiMaggio pickup into what was originally a 1963 Gibson SG Jr. And the story behind it's pretty cool. Background story in a nutshell, he got the 63 SG Jr. from a music store in Memphis in the 1960s because he was a local house painter from West Memphis, Arkansas. And he painted this music store, it was called Strings and Things, and um, I think it still exists to this day, but the place burned down and he repainted their new location, I think for free, and they gave him that SG Jr. 1963 as a uh, thank you for repainting it. So this all happened in the early 60s. So this was a guitar that he tinkered on throughout the 60s and 70s, and um, he gave it to me in like 2006, 2007, and I played the hell out of that thing until I destroyed it. Smashing and bashing it around literally all over the world with my first touring band, Bear Wires. It was such an awesome and very raw sounding guitar, and it was the perfect garage rock guitar. And uh, But the neck right here kept breaking, and it had some other issues, and uh, I'd been wanting to get an Ovation Breadwinner, so I transplanted the pickup and all the electronics and some of the brass stuff into this Ovation Breadwinner. I don't know if the brass does anything or not. There was some trend in the 70s where they thought brass being a soft metal would kind of sustain the sound. I don't know if that actually works, but I like it. I like it. Since modifying the Ovation Breadwinner, I toured quite a bit with this guitar, multiple European tours, hundreds of shows, and this thing has some serious mileage on it, but surprisingly, still in pretty good shape considering. Anyway, let's take a look at Brad repairing this thing. Nice HBO intro. Okay, so here we are on the bench with this breadwinner guitar, and this thing has quite a long and interesting story to it, according to Matthew. He said his uncle had actually given him some of this stuff, gave him this bridge pickup, 
and uh, the wiring harness came out of something else. Yep. Uh, we were going to look this thing over and just get an overview of just how strange and interesting uh, this guitar actually is. We have this uh, bridge here, which is kind of a, it's like a plastic, um, some kind of molded plastic. And we also have a, sort of a molded plastic, or I don't know if it's nylon or whatever, saddle right there as well. The bridge pickup is a super distortion. The ring around this is solid brass. He said his I uncle love that made pickup. this. This so is nasty. an original pickup. That's such good now, tone, just a, dirty and nasty. You don't even need a distortion pedal. of this guitar with different pickups in it. He said he didn't care for the, this pickup. Yeah, the original pickup sucked. Thought they sounded it had super weird. Like, I don't even know what they were. The words he used were uh, I don't even know what you would use them for. I'm not it sure. I haven't looked at weird. any specifications on this. I'm coming to this. Took batteries. Completely... Uh, cold here so just looking it over with you guys but i can tell that this thing is very high quality just simply because of the attention to detail the types of co uh, components materials used this is actual ebony on the fretboard the very nice fretboard the ebony fret fretboard to be okay it's nice touch. i don't know if he's had fretwork done at some point somebody must have done some fretwork at some point because to be from the 70s and he said this thing has played hundreds of shows just since he's had it and uh to be this old and to have played that many shows and to have that little fretware is pretty remarkable. So either somebody has yeah. refretted this or I had somebody a guy refret it. I think in two thousand, uh, you know, high frets with twelve, uh, two thousand thirteen, something like that, and uh, leveled and crowned and, and all. A that couple stuff. people have worked so on it. To do here, very interesting end of the fretboard there. What does that remind you of? They just took the headstock of a Gibson and stuck it on the end of the fretboard and said, screw you. <laughs> Play authentic. <laughs> Gotta admire it. Again, they made a couple different configurations of this, but I've seen them with the uh, jack, not here on the side like it is on this one, but I've seen it with the jack up here on top and then two switches as well. So you should see a jack yeah, I took and those two out. switches and then these two knobs. This knob might be original. I think some of the ones that I've seen... Uh, had a knob that was very similar to this. That's correct. That was uh, original got, knob. This knob obviously is not original. I don't see how he even uses that. Since recording these <laughs> clips, I was able to do some more research on the Breadwinner model, and it has a very interesting history to tell. The Breadwinner was one of three models that shared the same shape. The other two were the Deacon, which had fancier diamond fretboard inlays, fretboard binding, and transparent finish options. Wouldn't mind having a Deacon. And the Breadwinner Limited model, which seems to have come later and featured another body cut on the low E side. Huh. Only around 500 of this latter model were produced. Wow. The early Breadwinner yeah, the body shape's not came as with good. a special finish called Lyracord, which is the same patented fiberglass and resin material used to form the backs of Ovation acoustic guitars. It has a distinctive concrete-like texture and is a very durable finish, which helps hide imperfections with age. That's why so many of these that you see look really, really nice, even so far into the future. The Breadwinner Deacon line came with Active Fet Electronics, which appears to be the first of its kind to Ooh, be mass-produced in the United States. There were at least three different wiring circuits, which existed during the lifetime of the line, two of which included the early ones with the oversized single quilt pickups, and active FET electronics, and later passive Most of the models stuff with humbuckers. Like, the active circuits were powered by two 9-volt batteries in series for 18 volts total. According to another source, which I will link in the description, the designer of the breadwinner, whom we only know as Mike in this interview, <laughs> states, I worked at Ovation Instruments in 1971 as a commercial artist in their advertising public relations department. My primary job was print advertising and sales promotion. One day in 1971, Jim Ricard, the chief engineer, asked me to submit sketches for a solid body electric that they were contemplating producing. I did and the breadwinner Deacon was one of them. I left Ovation shortly after that due to a company-wide layoff. I never got to see my guitar made. Years later while watching TV I saw David Cassidy playing a breadwinner on a rerun of the Partridge Family Show. Oh my god. I was thrilled to say the least. He just designed that guitar and Famous got users of the breadwinner Deacon line <laughs> include it. Mark Bolin of T-Rex, Robert Smith, while with Susie and the Banshees, and Ace Freely, who we see pictured with one here during a 1972 rehearsal. He says he's the type of player, and I consulted with him at length on this, just to see what he wants to do. 
um, what kind of modifications, if any, he wants to make to this thing. Basically, he wants this thing brought up to snuff and brought up to scratch. Uh, he's doing some recording. And I told him, I said, you know, this would be a prime time to do that with this what you want to do with it, you know, to make it what you want it to be. Like, for instance, we've got this neck pickup just flopping here. I said, if you don't like this neck, pick, neck pickup, we can actually um, take it out and replace it. And he said, actually, um, and he kind of thought, you know, maybe that might be cool also. But then after we got to talking at length, I said, well, this would also be a good time probably just to get rid of this wiring harness because this is not the original wiring harness anyway. Like I said, this came out of something else. So just to get rid of the wiring harness, uh, keep the super distortion pickup, which he likes. Definitely keep that. And then that. just go to a single volume pot and nothing else, no tone pot, because he doesn't use his tone no, pot. Yeah, I don't all. use a tone pot. And he's pot. like a lot of players in that regard. I said, you know, you really don't need it if you don't use it, so we could just bypass, we could leave the tone <laughs> knob off of this thing. Uh, and he said, yeah, you know, while we're at it too, just, just, you know, maybe just leave that pickup completely out. And I said, well, we can just cut a different pick guard. Anyway, I bought a pick guard blank on eBay that's uh, on its way, and we're going to make a new pick those guard pickups, for this thing. Those original uh, we'll pickups are heavy, too. We'll like this pick up into, onto the new pick it's guard like a chunk with, of with lead. this ring. He wants to keep the ring. But he, he said just eliminate the neck pickup and just read, when you redo the pick guard, he said just leave that with no hole. Um, but, yeah, this is going to be a cool one. I think first thing we're going to do here is uh, remove the strings. Yeah, man, just an interesting, uh, interesting old vintage guitar, new heart. Hartford, Connecticut, Ovation Instruments. 901, Memphis area code. But yeah, so there we are uh, with this Ovation. Let's go ahead and turn it over again and we'll clip the strings and uh, remove that pit guard, see what's underneath that pit guard. Just looking at the nut, it looks like it is bone, perhaps. And it looks like maybe it's non-original. Yeah, it's I think I was playing that in 2013. It fit perfectly here on the ends. Which we probably won't mess with. I mean, the setup and everything seems okay, but we'll... We'll definitely adjust that as well. It's so cool to see this. Yeah, let's go ahead and get the... Uh... Yeah, see, I don't like this at all because it's you've got these ball ends that are down underneath the, the body. Like his only guitar. <laughs> he doesn't play... Not that this is his number one, but this this is the only guitar he has. Had to let a backup go. Just the, every I would love to have a white sold, so. Viper. Have the... Have the preacher, a, a, a cream preacher, cream viper, cream breadwinner on the wall all together. I'll get that. But yeah, see that. So I think this might be a case where, while we've got this thing all apart and everything, we may shim this neck to give it a slightly different angle so that we can raise this up, and then uh, you know, of course, we'll have we might have to adjust the pickup uh, at the end of the day, but it's much better to have this up so that so that you can access everything back here properly. That's not an original screw, the one I just took out. It's like a brass. Yeah, who there. knows on this thing. All right, so there's that part. We just got a ground wire to take off now. Got a bunch of foam in here that's uh, helping to prop up the DiMarzio and keep it from making noise and flopping around. Um, but he said these pots, supposedly the wiring harness was out of a 60s SG, but the only thing I'm seeing that might even be 60s SG would be this pot. I think this pot had been replaced by the time he had gotten the wiring Probably harness. Probably so. So that pot is a newer pot. So it's nothing old or special. This one, let's see. This one is, this is actually 1972 this pot so this this pot's probably original to the guitar i don't know i think he may have been mistaken on the wiring harness no it was just because this is my a, uncle had been this is a 1972 hacking on pot. that sg for so Fifth many week, years 1972 right there and that's also not a cts who knows pot. what a, that uh, thing happened to that thing it's just no telling um a guitars are 71 that 72 uh, must have CTS been right something here, my my uh my uncle got so and one replaced into the um, 63 sg a, this vintage lovely vintage DeMarzio. yes sir it is look at that thing made in the yeah. usa lovely pickup old vintage demarzio you can just look at it and tell it and sounds good by the patina on that that's a pretty old one he said it, it was a 70s demarzio and i believe him i'm not even sure how to as far date, as i know uh, old 
DeMarzio's like that. I'm not even sure that if you can. But uh, but there it is. Very nice. So let's tell you what. Let's desolder this from the ground. And actually, before we go any further here, just look at the state of this <laughs> wiring harness with all this uh, tape and everything that's on there. That piece of tape fell off. But, I mean, all of the connections have just basically been spliced. Oh, my God. And taped. So the whole thing is just kind of botched in here and not done professionally at all. So this is certainly going to be an up uh, an upgrade over what nice. he's got now. So there's the whole pit guard assembly out, and uh, he didn't have the neck pickup hooked up at all. It's just uh, dangling it's there, I guess, or doesn't have any wires at all. Um, so it wasn't even hooked up to anything, so no need to, I guess disconnect it from anything but yeah so this is a 72 pot and this is a newer pot so we'll probably reuse this pot right here in our new wiring scheme so he doesn't have to buy a new pot okay so here is the pickup that was in this thing check this thing out this is uh this thing is, is really, like a brick this is really an interesting bit of kit here i've never seen anything quite like it okay so look at the difference here in the size of the pickup here's a regular humbucker <laughs> Look at this monster. It's a brick. Just a massive, massive thing. I mean, this this thing weighs as much as two regular humbuckers. Taking that out actually does, the guitar does feel a little bit That's lighter. That, he does. He said he didn't. He never liked the tone it of sucks. these, so it we're going to leave it out. He shipped the uh, payment for the service uh, back here, which I've already gotten out, but there's also a some kind of rock in here. I don't know. I don't know exactly what this is. It's some kind of semi-precious stone. I think it's called Kyanite. I think Kyanite. he actually mentioned Doris something about this good luck when he first the, sent it, but I forget what uh, he said about that. I'll have to ask him what's up with that. Uh, Maybe that's a tour, good luck charm. I stuck it in there just as like a the little guitar. good luck charm. <laughs> Whoa, he's getting a pit guard. I can't believe he cut this out by hand. That's so cool. I guess you can't order a, uh, order one like this. Wow, I can't believe he hand filed all this. <clears throat> Guitologist, if you're watching, thank you so much. You put a lot of work into this thing. It looks so good. This man. <clears throat> it's badass. So you see there's the rough edge, so there's what I start with, and then beveling it, you end up with something more like this. It looks more like a finished product. The finished product does look good. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. <clears throat> okay, so the pick guard is pretty much done now. We're gonna turn our attention to the electronics. I'm just gonna basically desolder. Well, I don't have to desolder half of it. <laughs> <laughs> this is crumbling that's the ground. Oh All my right. god. Let's do something about Who that. Knows, no big man. deal. There's some extension wire. That's what this little splice is. That's just extending that wire. So I'm, I'm just going to take all of this uh, tape off. And we'll see a little bit better what we're dealing with here. That thing had had a few people mess I'm with it. I'm guessing that's ground. I guess that's the ground wire and that's the hot. I don't know what all, why there would be two wires here though. So the reason this has two conductors and a shield is because this is a vintage 70s dual sound super distortion, not just the regular oh. super distortion. The dual sound was first offered in 1974 and is still available today. We got two conductors and ground right there. 13.7K, look at that. Damn. Fresh out the box. Look at that. Nice. Look at him go. Whoops, I forgot the shielding tape. I knew I was getting ahead of myself. This is like one of those mo most satisfying 
videos. Tightly huh. on the back. Uh, that's why it was dragged down as far as it was. I think if it was screwed in less tightly, um, these ball ends would not sink down in the body like they were. So um, we'll try that. Cleaning it up. Also, one thing I did have to do uh, is drill a, a, just a very shallow hole here and a very shallow one here um, to accommodate the screws for because he wanted to keep that uh, mounting ring for the pickup and uh, the screws that I had to use on that were s slightly longer than I guess his old ones. Uh, actually, that's not true. His old ones were sticking into the uh, the body right here and actually raising up the pick guard in this area so it was it wasn't even flat huh. against the body so again the idea here is just to shield out any uh rf interference that's radio frequency interference coming into <clears throat> into uh our signal from the guitar and this will just quiet things down this is really especially important if you're recording which he is doing a lot of recording so this is something that um for sure needs to be done to this guitar. Thanks, Brad. Protect against any phantom waves. One more little piece right here to kind of tie these two bits together. It's definitely gonna be much better shielded now than it was before. Look at the chips on that thing. Now there's room to actually get to the ball ends of the string. You should be able I'm to so glad he fixed that. That was annoying. Get, you know, a tool I had no idea why that was even doing that. Okay, it's time to put a few finishing touches on this thing. Uh, we need to replace the magic <laughs> jujube that this you thing came with. You put my magic with, crystal so we'll back in. in the back That's good. Tape it down. <laughs> Apparently juju is also a name of a type of music that comes from West Africa. In addition to describing any object that carries magical powers, I think that's also the derivation of the word mojo. <laughs> Juju mojo. Here we're going to put a little sticker on it here. It goes that, to 11. Uh, I got it, Nam. I think it was uh, amplified parts sticker that I just cut a hole in the center of it uh, because it just looks funky and cool. He gave the okay. I'll on probably that. take that. We're going to put Kalium strings soon, on this. If you guys are interested in uh, checking out Kalium strings, I'll put a link down in the description. These were sent to me for free uh, by the owner of the company, and I, I like Kalium. them so far. Kalium strings are good. I like the strings, I'll say that. Now, I know I had said I wasn't going to do any fret work on this guitar, but I changed my mind midstream. Uh, I took a second look at these, and I you know, saw a few nicks here and there. There's one on that fret right there. You can see up on the uh, near the high E. Here we're going to start with some leveling. Moving on to the crowning tool. And I just kind of dispense with the formality and just put the eraser down on its side to get multiple frets at once. The pickup was a bit high and it was rattling against the string, so we'll just lower that down. We can, uh, we can adjust this for optimum sound in a bit, but for now we just need to get it out of the way of the strings so that we can intonate and we'll be ready to demo this thing. But before we demonstrate the tone, I wanted to speak to... Thanks for watching. We invite you to subscribe and follow along as our band Dream Machine records our upcoming album. And we'll see you on the next one. Hello, I'm Jesus Christ. And I'm here with an important message about my favorite band, Dream Machine. They're currently working on their third album, but they need your help to make it happen. Matthew and Doris Melton played me some of the new demos, and it's already sounding heavenly. So, if you don't want to go to hell, you should consider joining their cause by donating to them on Patreon. Link in the description.